right. That's like a Pavlovian sound, that little <laughs> la- that little chime at the end of our opening sequence that gets everybody excited, gets you salivating for the most interesting car of the day. That's what we do here. We talk about the most interesting car of the day on uh, all the automotive enthusiast auction sites. My name is John Polnick. I'm your host in Las Vegas, along with my partner, Michael Deeb in San Francisco. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, give a shout out to our friends at God and Classic. Huh? What do you think of that, Michael Deeb? Yeah. So, JP, God and Classic, uh, God and Porsche of Las Vegas is the very first Porsche Classic partner in North America. They were vetted by Porsche uh, to be the very first. And for a year, they were exclusively the only Classic partner in the United States. Um, but it's because they have the passion, they have the expertise, they have the parts, they have the service, and they have the sales all very well versed in classic cars pretty much every classic car that porsche has ever made uh god and classic in las vegas they are the experts um go to them for your parts go to them for your service and if you're looking for a car or have one to sell call our friends at god and porsche of las vegas tell them that the bid nerds sent you they may not know what that is we've had that happen apparently people have called and said hey the bid nurse sent us and they're like what's that so i think mm-hmm. it's getting around to the rest of the people the dealership that they actually support the show uh which i doubt is kind it of funny but i doubt it yeah they don't really <laughs> yeah. uh, not a lot of communication but if you call steve you're gonna steve the the manager in, in the yeah call steve he'll know what steve you're talking understand. about but uh, everyone else he, he, will be know- like, hmm? <laughs> he knows what a bid nerd is that's yeah. right all right uh look uh, thanks you guys for being fans of the show those of you who are part of the nerd nation you guys have been doing an amazing job sharing your favorite episode on facebook groups that we are noticing spikes in uh viewership on specific episodes episodes that you guys share on facebook groups that has really been kind of getting us cool results uh we are on a fast track we are on a race to get to our thousand subscribers we are less than a couple hundred uh, subscribers to go. So please help us out. Let's get to a thousand. Let's really ramp this show up. We're going to do some more stuff for you guys. When we get to a thousand subscribers, we've been talking about this for quite a while now. We're going to make t-shirts and we're going to make stickers when we get to a thousand <laughs> subscribers. Um, find us at uh, Luft Cult coming up uh, shortly and just a, just a, I don't know what day this episode will air, but Luft Cult is coming up at the end of April in San Francisco. So both the nerds will be there and there are other events uh, that we talk about quite a bit. So watch an episode and I'm sure you can find out about that. All right, Michael D, most interesting car of the day. We've got a little bit of deja vu going on this week. Yeah, uh, I get on these kicks, John. Recently. It's yeah. like the the rain has broken in the Bay Area. It's been raining for four months here, and we haven't had that in like 40 years. So uh, so now it's like convertible weather, and one of my favorite convertibles is the Honda S2000. We covered that beautiful AP1 that was white with the red interior. But Bring a Trailer has this 2008 Honda S2000CR. And uh, the CR, God, I don't even know what the CR stands for. Club Racer? I think that's what it stands for. Uh, Club Racer with just 53,000 miles out of Fort Myers, Florida. The car has had a couple of previous owners, but the guy who owns it now uh, looks like he's taking decent care of the car. Um, All the VIN tags are evident on the car, which means the car hasn't been banged up or bent. There's no bodywork or paint that's been done that to the car. Um, It looks to be bone stock, which is also really nice, uh, with the exception of a K&N cold air cold air intake and then they put a strut tower brace which is kind of funny because i don't recall ever seeing a strut tower brace on an s2000 that that structure is so rigid and the car is so well produced um that i've never known anybody to put a strut tower brace like it doesn't really need one so it's interesting that one of the previous owners put one on this car and it remains um, but what makes the CR so special is they basically gutted the car and took a hundred pounds out of it by removing the convertible top and the mechanism that runs the convertible top. Um, so they saved a hundred pounds that way. And then, so basically by removing the convertible top and the convertible top mechanism, Honda saved a hundred pounds, but now the car is a roadster. So every CR comes with a hard top that you can fit on the car uh, that you could take with you so that you could have it, make it like a coupe for a period of time. But most of the time that you drive the car, you'll be driving it as a pure roadster. So the cars are lighter weight. Um, and then they've got this aero kit on the front air dam and this really cool rear wing. The cars all come with this sort of Alcantara interior and fabric seats. And then uh, the cars only came in four colors. I think it was uh, yellow, black, white, and red. And, oh, no, blue. One of them was this uh, really cool blue. 
And then the last piece was uh, they went back to the AP1's close, um, uh, quicker steering ratio, quicker steering box. Uh, so these cars have stiffened suspension, light, lightweight, and faster steering, all of which would make these cars better track toys. And uh, so this particular car is one of 700 club racer models and looks to be in really nice condition in, in Florida. So JP, um, I feel like if ever there was an S2000 that would be your car, it would be this black roadster, stiffer suspension, winged car. I think this is the car that I would pick for you. If, you, if I was going to gift you an S2000, it would be this car right here. What do you think of this car? Would you just put the, uh, the hard top and mothballs in Las Vegas and leave it there for all of eternity and just be happy as a clam in your cool Japanese car that's a pure roadster and lightweight version? and handles really cool and goes really fast and really fast around the turns. What do you think? I'm glad you're not rich because that would be an awkward situation. Uh, I think this yeah. is the dumbest looking stock S2000 ever. Um, I, the, the, the I knew wing you'd like it. And the, <laughs> the plastic or, I mean, it just looks like it, it's, I'm shocked. <laughs> like, I didn't know. I, I know I've heard of them. I don't really know S2000s like you do. Um, but looking at the, the body kit and everything like that, I would have thought that this is some silly aftermarket thing that some kid did. Uh, it's just that wing just does not look right. It just looks so tacky. Um, the, the, the gills on the front, everything that I like about S2000s, um, this car seems to just throw in the trash uh, from, yeah. a, from an aesthetic point of view. It looks so tacky. I don't mind the seats. I like that they're, I like on paper when you're describing it, it sounds so right. It sounds like, yeah. yes, lightened car, get rid of the actual convertible top and just make it a hard top, removable hard top. All those things sound right, but the wheels are tacky. The, the trim, it's just none of it works. And this car looks like it's beat to hell. This car looks <laughs> like everything that we always complain about Florida. I mean, yes. stings and scratches and, <laughs> and like, why the hell didn't this guy? We talked about it on, it makes sense. Like, well, it doesn't make sense. We were talking about a, I think it was a Supra Turbo, like a, you know, 96 or something like that. The Holy Grail kind of car. Uh, that yeah. that uh, was being sold on cars and bids. Uh, by Stradman's YouTube, car. Stradman's car, right? And it's like, dude, he yeah. didn't detail it. You could tell that it's clean, but just like dirty. Like, dude, spend the $500 or $1,000, get it ceramic coated, make it look great. Um, and that was a white car. It'd be very easy to do. Black cars, it's really hard. I, I own a couple of black cars. Yeah. I know the struggle is real. And if you want to get, you've got this kind of rare S2000 car that people want because it's a collector car. Um, spend a few hundred dollars on getting the thing detailed so that those close-up pictures don't look quite so ratty. It just like it just you can smell the Florida on this car. You can smell <laughs> that it's you know the the humidity that's kind of made all the plastics expand and contract and just you know it's like ew. I just I I I, I love the car on paper. You're right that it does make sense that this would be the car that I would like. Um, but it's just not. I, I, I don't yeah. like the trim on it. I would love if they made something like this without the silly stuff on it. That's all right. I'll take it. I like this car. I know it's beat up. I agree with you that even that front end, um, there's like a rubber spoiler that goes across the bottom. But like the first part of the plastic, it's all scratched up. Like this guy just went really fast into every mini mall in Florida mm -hmm. um, and scraped the front end, you know, every other day. And it's a shame that somebody had this really special car and didn't take better care of it because it doesn't have that many miles. Um, but this doesn't mean somebody won't still pay big money for it because they're just that rare. And from the moment the last S2000s were sold off of dealerships lot in like 2010, because they really, Honda really struggled to sell the last of these, um, the prices and the values on these have gone through the roof. Um, so with 53,000 miles on a black CR, I still think this car is going to do okay. It hey. just opened... Oh, sorry. I just wanted to ask you a question. Um, yeah. Because you know these cars. Like, look, okay, this thing has that strut tower brace that you were talking about. Um, yeah. Which is obviously an aftermarket one. This is a heavy-duty looking strut tower. Because not only does it go yeah. from one sh shock top to the other, um, it yeah. goes down to an engine mount down yeah. below. It's like a triangulated thing. Yeah. I don't yeah. know how many people know that, but you put a strut tower brace in a car, um, it is incredibly helpful for the rigidity, especially for a convertible. But if you get in a front end accident with a strut tower brace, you're totaling the car. Even a minor accident is going to 
yeah. is going to bend the frame having that reinforcement across there. Um, that is right. You yep. know, so it's like on a car that doesn't really need it. I don't know if I'm in th this with the extra, you know, the extra access point. Holy cow. That's got to be one hell of a car to drive, yeah. though. Right. Yeah. But that would only be good if you were actually tracking the car. And I just yeah. don't gather that that's what was going on here. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this car has had a, a pretty rich history of a lot of track days. And that's why it was on there. Hmm. Um, our car just opened. It really closes basically like a week from now. So early in the game, John, it's at $10,000 on two bids. Um, I don't think this car is going to do like, I feel like the S2000 market has softened a little bit over the last year. Um, I, I would have said that this car would have brought uh, $85,000 not that long ago, but I think the softening in the market and the aftermarket mods and the fact that the car doesn't look pristine. Um, I'm going to be a little bearish on this one. I'm going to go $65,000. I mean, it is a. It actually, looking at it right now, it's at twenty thousand dollars right now, but it still has a week to go. So, um, I mean, it has a yeah. long way to go. Sixty-five thousand. I mean, fifty-three thousand miles. It's great. It looks like this car wasn't just hermetically sealed. And it's great to see that people. So or someone was driving. It got a. It got a bid while we were covering it, so oh, it's no now kidding. twenty twenty thousand dollars on three bids. Yeah, it got a bid, literally just a few minutes ago. So yeah. yeah. So there we go. Uh, I'm going to take your word for it that this is worth something. I mean, we see really, really clean, regular S2000s struggle to get more than 40-something. Um, this one just doesn't seem clean to me. Um, but it's a special edition one, so I'm going to just say 50. Um, and I, I'm going to admit that I'm just not an S2000 fan. And I, I shouldn't say not that I'm not a fan. It's some just I don't know a ton about them. Um, so right. it'd be interesting to see the comments. I'm sure some of you guys out there will school me, excuse me, even more than Deeb can uh, on this car. I, uh, I, I'm really interested to see what the results are going to be on this thing. This is the kind of episode that I think one of the nerd herd should share on a S2000 group on Facebook because this is the kind of thing where yeah. someone that knows their ish will go, oh, okay, one of the two nerds knows what he's talking about. <laughs> one um and uh, one you know they should uh, they should that would hopefully encourage people to come and be part of this conversation because we get better at this the more episodes we do because we talk about some cars that we may or may not know and then we watch the comments and we learn things so uh please continue to comment and let us know what you guys think about this car what do you think the results will be now's the time to put your bid in the comments below uh let's see what you guys got we'll find out what happened with this crs 2000 2008 right after this Hey guys, I gotta tell you about our friends God and Porsche of Las Vegas and God and Classic. If you're looking for a new Porsche or a classic, you gotta call our friend Steve at God and this guy. 1989 linen gray metallic G50 cab. Is that gonna be for sale? It is gonna be for sale. Uh, the car only has 65,000 miles. On Save it. yourself the hassle of screwing around with all the auctions like we always talk about and just talk to Steve. He'll find you the classic Porsche you're looking for, Gun Porsche of Las Vegas. If you love watching car videos on YouTube, you gotta check out my channel, The Rally Show. Oh, oh, this car! I am driving. A 2020. You do have to check out the Rami show. <laughs> and thanks for hanging out with the bid nerds. Thanks for being part of the nerd herd and the nerd nation. We love you guys, or at least I do. I don't know about Michael Deeb, my partner. I don't know how much he loves the nerd nation. I kind of wonder. I think maybe he doesn't because he never comments. He never I responds did. to the comments. Uh, I, you know, we try to we try I, to get comments down there and uh, respond to everybody. I and went, we appreciate all the I comments. I went on. I went Once. on last week and commented on a whole bunch of stuff. Oh, he like, went on last five, week. Thanks, Michael. Four D, or five of them. Yeah, yeah. With your presence Absolutely. on the internet. Can't be bothered yeah, yeah. with the nerd herd, the guys who actually, <laughs> you know, watch our show. Jeez. All right. I'm enough guilting my partner. Get in there. Uh, yeah. We really do appreciate you guys uh, being the nerd herd out there. Um, you know, we're seeing more and more subscribers. Uh, we asked you guys to share yeah. your favorite episode on a Facebook group. Uh, and it seems like some of you have or did or something, or maybe just people that were watching uh, hit subscribe or something like that. I don't know. We, we definitely seem to be getting a surge in subscribers and we are hoping yeah. to get a thousand. Uh, thousand that is by make it to a thousand, not a thousand more, yeah. even though that would be great. By Luftcult, we're hoping we have up to a thousand. Uh, we uh, we want to get this channel a little bigger. Uh, we can do more fun things if we do, and we're getting there. So thank you so much for your help. Yeah. All right. Uh, Michael Deeb, what happened with this, uh, with this hairdresser car? 
John, uh, hang on a second, John. Do you, do you smell that? Uh oh, here we you, go. You Blow smell that? that? Yahtzee alert. I smell a Yahtzee alert. Check it out, JP. Our 2008 Honda S2000 with 53,000 miles out of Fort, Ly- uh, Fort Myers, Florida. John, I thought that this car realistically would would take about $65,000, if not more. I actually thought my bid was kind of conservative to bring it home. The car only has 50,000 miles. It's one of 700 CRs, and the cars are rare. And black, look, I think the car looks really good in black. You laughed at this car because of the uh, spoilers and the wings and the um, not necessarily the hardtop roadster thing. I think you like that feature. Uh, but you said that like an S2000 doesn't need the wings and they kind of ruined this car. So you took the ever pragmatic Debbie Downer $50,000 bid or take on this car on bring a trailer. And I was like, man, is he going to look bad when we cap this show next week? JP, you missed a Yahtzee by just a thousand dollars. Our car sold for $51,000 on 27 bids. And I am eating, I forget the name of this color. Let me read it to you. Uh, Berlina Black. I am eating Berlina Black Crow this morning on the show because, John, you nailed that one. My hat's off to you. Although I'm not going to take it off because I'm really bald. But, uh, yeah, you got that one just right. I think um, it's interesting in the comments after the auction closed that a lot of people came on to say, yeah, S2000 uh, values were really over, like, like kind of overdone the last couple of years. And this is like a representation of – um, those prices coming back to earth. I don't know if I totally agree with that. This is kind of a rare car by the numbers and it's a fantastic driving car. Um, but, uh, I, I, like, I don't think that the S 2000s, you know, day has come and passed. I still think that these are good. And, and this one being a CR being low miles, maybe it's not investment grade, but I think it's a pretty safe place to park your money, especially if it's only going to take 50 grand to park and not the 65 or more that I thought it was going to. So I don't know. I have mixed emotions about the result, but I will tip my hat to you because you nailed this one. What do you think? Yeah, I think that take uh, that, uh, you know, S 2000s are now depreciating is totally wrong. I think it's just this specific car Um, and not even just that it's a CR, but this specific car um uh-huh. it's poorly presented the the pictures yes. were terrible black uh, you know and i own black cars um and i love black uh, as a color for a car it's actually my favorite color for a car um but if you're going to bring a black car to market you're going to have to spend a couple of bucks to get it detailed the day uh that they're going to <laughs> take the pictures yeah. because this car um would have brought closer to your number if it were presented correctly i specifically my bid being low uh was because i thought this car was poorly presented and even though i mm. don't like all the silliness of the cr version of this i think it's mm-hmm. just uh, i think there are people that absolutely do and i mean just all we got to do is go back to that white on red red and black one that we talked about a, a couple of weeks ago that wasn't a CR and that car was immaculate and perfect. And I can't remember yeah. what it brought, but it brought a lot of money. Um, this car yeah. should have brought more money if it were presented well. And it's just, I think, I think it was brought honestly. I, I think uh, at least, you know, it wasn't brought in a way to market that, that makes it look like it's, you know, trying to cover things up. So you got to appreciate that. But you know, you're looking at the pictures and look, there's no pictures with the roof off. You know, in all 183 pictures, there's a couple of pictures of the interior with the roof off, but there's no actual wide shots of the car with the roof off. And that's half the appeal. And I know there's a lot of cabriophobes out there that don't like convertibles. um, But let's face it, a lot of people, the whole uh, big part of the appeal of a a S2000 is the drop top motoring, right? Um, I do. I love listening to you talk. Yeah, (laughs) I love listening to you talk talk about this stuff. Like, Like, I would not like... Consciously, I didn't notice that. But as soon as you say it, I'm like, yeah, idiots. Why did they miss that? But like, you know, I'm like so quick to try and get through the details and make my notes. But when you when you critique, you know, how the car is brought to market because you have an eye for this, this is your profession. Um, I love listening to you talk about this stuff because it's it is simple if you take a step back. Um, or listen to somebody who knows what they're doing. And you and I have harped on this, especially when we first started to do the show. Hire a professional photographer and stop doing stuff like this because you left money on that table. Uh, John, before I give it back to you, that 2000 S2000 that we looked at a couple weeks ago had 29,000 miles on it. I said 45, you said 46, and the car sold for 44. 
thousand dollars so we were right on the money for that and I, I think that's all the money for that car but this car yeah he he left money on the table he should have cleaned it he should have shot it better uh, i couldn't agree with you more so please keep going yeah i mean here's that car that you were just talking about i mean that's a beautiful car that is yeah. minimalism that is that is just a pure sports car right that is a pure modern sports car um, and yeah. you know, it, I had kind of a silly, uh, header for that particular video. I think it was like, you know, can an adult male actually drive this thing? Um, <laughs> you know, and in the comments we were like, ah, oh, hairdresser car. I can't believe, uh, yeah. anyone like this thing, but you know, I look, this car is drive a better one. car than an old 911. If it comes to yeah. driving, I mean, we are, we have a uh, lift cult weekend is coming up, um, in just a few yeah. weeks. And, uh, you know, I'm going to be driving my old. 911 all the way to see you and we're going to be driving yep. back roads on the coast and all that kind of stuff you know between you and me i'd rather drive this s2000 uh than <laughs> i'm gonna be working my butt off uh in yeah. that old 911 trying to keep it you know facing the, the the direction that i want it to be facing this car you can have a blast in your sleep and and it's not so powerful that it's just not fun it's just it's the right amount of all the things that make uh being a car enthusiast uh, fun. So I don't know. What do you guys think of the results out there? Uh, was this CR poorly, uh, poorly shown or is it just, that's it. S 2000s have seen their day and they're going under, uh, let us know in the comments below. We love the yeah. comments from all you guys. Uh, the nerd car was stolen. Somebody did good. The guy who bought it, I think did well. Get those words.